In this segment, we're going to start talking about transport through membranes. And we're going to start with the, the sort of uh, easiest one to, to consider, volume transport through membranes. Basically, water is going through the membrane and um, almost everything else is along for the ride. Right? And, your, and your book uses this word phenomenological. It, um, it's a fancy way of saying we're just trying to come up with equations to describe what we see. Um, it's different from we have equations that we believe to be fundamental and we're trying to build up from there to a system that describes what we see. Um, we're trying just directly describe what we see. All right, so in volume transport, the important thing is volume fluence, the flow per unit uh, area per second through a membrane, all right? Flow per unit area per second through an membrane, a membrane. And, and this is just volume per second through a membrane area S divided by the area S. Um, and we look at just water, we can write this as uh, our volume fluence is the filtration coefficient or hydraulic permeability times the difference in pressure. We can add in a solute, and when we add in a solute, right, now we've added some stuff here um, that won't go through, right? We, so we've got things that will go through, things that won't go through. Well, you know, as I said before, when you're looking at which way is, is, is the flow going to be, you ignore the stuff that won't go through, right? You ignore it and you just look at um you know here and here that's the stuff that'll go through or here and here that's the stuff will go through so you're going to be flowing that way right here and here so this stuff doesn't matter just the stuff that will flow through so the flow is going to be that way the fact that the pressures are equal on either side immaterial Partial pressures of things that will and will not flow through, or the partial pressure of things that will flow through, are all that matter here. Uh, and then last, we're going to make the membrane partially permeant, right? So some of the stuff in here, some of the stuff in the solutes can go through. Um, and that, that changes things a little bit, right? So now what how do we redraw this? Well, the stuff that can go through, right, is this. That's the stuff that can go through, right? Um, and here, this is the stuff that can go through, right? So over here, driving pressure for permeant molecules, things that can go through, is 1 minus sigma um, onto pi. Pi is the driving pressure. Um, sigma pi. Yes, I know. Sigma pi is osmotic pressure of impermeant molecules, right? These are this is the piece. This is called the reflection coefficient, right? This is the fraction of of a uh, solute that gets reflected back at the boundary, and so um, it goes from zero to one, and basically it's the fraction of the solute that will make it through. All right. So now it's it's this line, this partial pressure, this this partial pressure that we're trying to balance out. So here you can see if we look like this, right? No, well, this will this will continue to flow this direction, right? So we've got our total. The this is what can flow through. This is what can flow through. The flow is going to be in that direction. All right. And so we've got our, our fluence is our permeability times our driving pressure, the difference in our driving pressure, plus the difference in the pressure of those, that fraction of the solute that can go back and forth. Um, and this Van Hout's law, Van Hoff's law, which is a uh, approximation of ideal gas approximation. Why isn't it an ideal gas approximation? All right, I'm going to flip forward a slide to talk about that. What's an ideal gas? Ideal gas, the gas molecules are bouncing around and they're not interacting with each other. Here, in dilute solution, the solute 
the solute's not interacting with itself, right? It's bouncing around inside the water, not interacting with itself. And so in that way, the solute looks like an ideal gas inside the water. All right, so we do the ideal gas approximation. We, we can get to this uh, equation for the fluence, which involves the reflection coefficient G and your temperature, and then the difference in the concentration of uh, the solute from one side to the other, right? And so again, we're, it's this piece and this piece that matter. The part that's not making it through doesn't matter. And you're looking at flow in this direction and to move uh, in volume transport, right? Uh, ultrafiltration, uh, ultrafiltra ultrafiltration um, water and small molecules are forced through moving. This is used to remove sodium from the blood. So you can design something that will just remove sodium from the blood. Water and sodium leaves everything else behind. Uh, there are also drinking straws that are designed around ultrafiltration that you can uh, stick into a mud puddle and drink pure water or stick into a cesspool and drink pure water. Uh, very important in the kits that our uh, pilots deploy with now. Okay, uh, next is solute transport through a membrane. So now we're talking, before we're talking about the water's moving along and everything else is along for the ride. Now we're talking about the solute going through on its own. And there's some fluence rate for the solute. Again, it can't, some fraction would be reflected and we're taking that out. And the concentration of the solute uh, is extremely important. And so and when we look at this like in a cylindrical pore like this and the solute's trying to bop along here, the other thing that matters is the size of the solute, right? So um, one of the things you got here, you got a, you've got a pore that the solute is bopping its, along, its way along through. Well, the radius of the pore is not fully available to the solute because the solute has some size itself. So if you were to look at where's the center of the solute, it's in a smaller cylinder. And so the area that it can go through is a radius of the pore minus the size of the solute. You know, so pi, this term right here, is the area the solute can actually go through. This term here is the area of the um, pore itself. This term is really just, this is the ratio, sorry. This is the ratio of the volume that the solute can occupy inside the pore to the volume of the pore. And so when you take that and multiply it by the, um, the concentration of the solute, you get the concentration of the solute inside the pore, which is less than the concentration of the solute out here. Right, so the concentration of the solute inside here has to be less than the concentration out here because the whole pore is not available to it. Um, and so you can work out the, what this is. And this, right, the delta Z disappears, the pi disappears, and you get 1 minus A over RP squared. That looks like and is how you figure out your reflection coefficient. And reflection coefficient is a large, in large part a function of the size of the pore. And we add in diffusion, and so solute flow, solute fluence is our, our uh, flow piece, right? Volume flow piece. And the C bar S is the average concentration because the concentration, if the concentration is lower on this end of the pore than it is on this end of the pore, um, what's going through is our average concentration. And then this is our diffusion piece, right? So this is the part piece due to volume fluence. This is the piece due strictly to diffusion. And so now we're looking at this is the rate at which solute is going through, right? And in terms of moles, you can write it out in terms of moles. Um, and because, uh, you know, you chemists like to do that, right? All right. So different ways things get through. One is volume transport we're just along for the ride uh, and then we can write begin looking at this in terms of solute transport how is the solute getting through there's a volume piece and then there is simply a diffusion piece where 
random motion of the solute gets it through the pore. Um, and oops, that's it for uh, that's it for this section.